Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, September 1st, 2019. We are beginning a new quarter uh, this morning. Uh, the quarter's title is Responding to God's Grace. Responding to God's Grace. And the unit one for this quarter is entitled God is Faithful. God is Faithful. A devotional reading for today's lesson is taken from Luke chapter 17, verses 22 and then 26 to 37. And then our background scripture is taken from Genesis chapter 18, verses 16 through chapter 19, verses 29. And uh, in our lesson today, we're going to be learning uh, more about God's justice and his mercy. We'll see, as we see <clears throat> throughout the Bible, that God reaches a, a point of intolerance for uh, sin, an overt uh, sin, um, and will judge that sin. Uh, as he does in a very dramatic way uh, in judging Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, we also see his mercy in delivering uh, Lot uh, from Sodom before, and, his, and his family before the destruction. Uh, and we see that, uh, that mixture, if you will, of judgment and grace. Uh, throughout the throughout the the Bible, uh, God uh, uh, delivered Noah and his family before destroying the world by flood, uh, when he had reached a point of intolerance because of the sin and the violence that he saw continue, continuing uh, in the uh, in the world at that time. The lesson title from the Standard Commentary is "Faithful During Distress." Faithful during distress. At the time of this recording, uh, I did not have the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, so our comments will be based on the commentary, uh, the standard commentary. So, uh, our, uh, in the way of background, our background begins in uh, chapter 18, again beginning at verse 16 and. And leading up to that verse, uh, we see uh, Abraham is on the plains of Mamre, and he's actually visited by uh, two angels and the Lord. This is uh, believed to be a pre-incarnate uh, Christ, uh, and he is he and uh, Sarah, who is lurking close by when Abraham is entertaining the three. Uh, or told that uh, Sarah is going to have a son uh, about this time the next year, and Sarah, uh, being an earshot of that of that statement, laughed. And of course, the angel, uh, the Lord asked why she asked, or why she laughed rather, and she denied it. And and he said, No, you did laugh. And because of that, this, the child's name is going to be Isaac, which is of course, uh, which of course means laughter. Uh, and, um, and then uh, Abraham uh, is told uh, uh, that, or let me back up, uh, then the two angels uh, and the Lord look towards Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, the angels uh, proceed, uh, they leave uh, headed towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and the Lord says to himself, uh, shall I hide from Abraham uh, what I'm going to do, seeing he's going to be the father of many nations and the, the entire world, as the earth is going to be blessed by him or in him or through him, if you will. And so he decides to tell Abraham what he's about to do. He's about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of their... Uh, wickedness, the, the the sinfulness that has come up before him, and has reached a level of intolerance. He said it's very grievous. And then Abraham remembers his nephew Lot is in Sodom. Uh, you remember uh, he and uh, Lot had a dispute over grazing territory, and Abraham said, uh, 
you know, you take whatever uh, land you desire and, and I'll take what's left, basically. And so Lot looked toward the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, the, gra- the fields that were well watered and decided to um, graze in that area and ultimately ended up in Sodom. Uh, and <clears throat> so Abraham begins to plead with God. Uh, asking him if there are 50 righteous uh, in the city, will you still destroy it? And God said he would not destroy it if there were 50. And, and you know the story. He he actually says if there are 45, if there are 40, 30, 20. And then finally he said, Lord, please be patient with me. This is the last time. If there are 10 righteous, will you destroy the city? And God said he would not destroy the city if there were 10 righteous found there. And then he left off talking to him. And, of course, the angels proceeded uh, with their mission to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because there were not ten found there. However, Lot and his family uh, were uh, 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 escorted out, uh, as we'll see in our lesson uh, today, uh, to safety. And and we'll uh, we'll pick up our our lesson at... uh, verse 19 I'm sorry verse 1 of chapter 19 let's just read through our lesson text and then we'll have some commentary from there so verse 1 of uh, chapter 19 says and there came two angels to Sodom at even and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom and Lot seeing them arose to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground But before they laid down, and we're skipping over to verse 4, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Then we skip to verse 15. And when the morning arose, we'll try to fill in the blanks as we have discussion. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold on him, his hand uh, upon him and his wife, and upon the hands of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful unto them, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Verse 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Uh, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found if the, thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that, I'm sorry, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore, the name of that city is called Zoar. The son was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And the, and he overthrew those cities and all the plains and all the inhabitants of the cities and that were and that which rather grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. And then we skip down to verse 29, which reads, And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities 
in which the Lord, in which Lot dwelt. And our key verse is, it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. Uh, that is again verse 29. The key aims of our lesson are number one, to list the salient points of Lot's flight from Sodom. List the salient, salient meaning clearly seen. Uh, number two, explain how this account demonstrates both judgment and the mercy of God, both the judgment and the mercy of God. And then number three, prepare an explanation, one that could be presented to an unbeliever of how God's judgment and mercy are displayed through the message of the gospel, that is the good news. And again, our lesson title is Faithful During Distress. And we're not talking about man's faithfulness. We're talking about God's faithfulness. Uh, our lesson has three major divisions. The lesson outline has three major divisions. The fir first is God's warnings. That's covered between chapter 19, verses 1, and then 4, and 5, and then 15 to 23. The second is God's judgment. That's covered between verses 19, 24 to 26. And the third is God's mercy, and that's covered uh, by verse 29, chapter 19, verse 29. Now, uh, scholars are not certain as to exactly where Sodom and Gomorrah were uh, located. Uh, it's believed they were within the territory of Moab, uh, that became Moab, uh, and along uh, with Zor, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah are listed as cities located in the Jordan Plain. You see that in Genesis chapter 13 and 14. Um, we know that the men are called uh, wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly in Genesis 13, 13. Uh, so uh, before, uh, the, before the lesson text from chapter 19, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah's reputation has already preceded it. Um, and we know that uh, Lot was was said to be um, a righteous man. As a matter of fact, uh, 2 Peter 2.7 tells us that the Lord delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation or way of life of the wicked, the wicked in Sodom, the city of Sodom. And verse 8 goes on to describe him as a righteous man who uh, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with the unlawful deeds of, again, of those wicked uh, men and women in Sodom. But the commentator goes on to say, you know, however Sodom, despite the tension between, uh, it says, uh, however, Lot also seemed to have become attached to life in Sodom, despite the tension between his righteousness and the wickedness of the city. You know, we can become tolerant of wickedness around us uh, and, uh, to the point where, uh, again, we, <clears throat> we allow it, uh, we allow ourselves to view it, we allow ourselves to, to be, uh, in some ways, partakers in it. I mean, not directly, but, of course, to be influenced by it in one way or another when we could separate ourselves from it, which is what Lot should have done. If we back up to chapter 18 uh, and verse 20, uh, we, we see again that uh, God or that God said that the, the, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was very grievous. It became very grievous in the Lord's sight. 
and he determined uh, that judge to carry out judgment upon them. And of course, uh, as we said in, in, in our introductory remarks, uh, Abraham uh, attempted to bargain, if you will, or intercede for the righteous that were there, uh, realizing that his nephew Lot was there. And of course, uh, not ten were found because God did not spare the city. So let's jump into our, our lesson text here. Um, verse 1a. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening, or even, or evening. Uh, again, there were three that visited Abraham in the plains of Mamre. The two angels uh, went forth to Sodom and Gomorrah to carry out the mission that the Lord had given them. The Lord stayed and uh, conversed or communed with Abraham for a period when Abraham was interceding for the righteous that, that might be found in Sodom. And then the Lord uh, left uh, Abraham. Uh, angels now in the appearance of men, and we'll see the, uh, the terms angel and men used interchangeably because they were in the appearance of men. Um, part B says, And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And this suggests that Lot had some position of leadership or authority. Uh, as, as most uh, the Bible students know, uh, the gates in ancient cities were places where judgment was carried out. And the city elders uh, often heard uh, different cases and rendered judgments in the gate. So uh, we can assume that Lot had some position of authority and he was watching those that came and went. In part C of verse 1 says, And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So he, he humbly, he meets them humbly, and uh, we'll see in a minute, uh, receives them pretty much the same way that Abraham uh, received um, the angels and the Lord uh, on the plains of, uh, in the plains of Mamre. Uh, and um, let's go on. Verse uh, four and five says, "But before, no, let me let me. I've got to fill in the gap here between verse one and verse four because I think it's important that uh, for continuity. So verse two says very quickly, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, unto your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet." And ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Verse 3. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. So he's offered them the same hospitality that Abraham offered the two angels and and the Lord. Uh, and so verse four and five read, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed or surrounded the house, both old and young. And this speaks to the thoroughness of the wickedness, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them unto us that we may know them. The men of the city no doubt uh, noticed something different about these men uh, that were angels. Perhaps they looked ex uh, exceptionally clean and 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 uh, 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 I don't know, maybe handsome even. But they had very wicked motives for wanting them to come out. Uh, this word no means to have sexual relationship with them, homosexual relationships, and even rape. They are intending, their intentions are very vile. And uh, reminds us of, uh, of Romans chapter 1, uh, verses 24 to 27, which reads, Wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, 
and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause he gave them up, he gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which is meat, which they deserved or, or qualified for. And if there's any doubt as to whether uh, God abhors homosexuality or the perversion of the natural uh, uh, design of sex, which is to be performed between a man and a woman and a married man and woman of that, uh, you need to read Romans chapter one and also read uh, what the sin, the, the, the prevalent sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was. It was not unneighborliness as some advocates, some homosexual advocates would have you believe. So when they said, when they said, bring them out that we may know them, they intended to violently rape them, to have homosexual sex with them. Um, now, uh, we skip down to verse 15, and, and rather than read those verses, let me try to summarize what happens between verse 5 and verse uh, 14 is Lot comes out and says, no, not so. He said, these men have come under my roof, uh, and I'm going to um, protect them. Uh, I've got two daughters that have never known men. Uh, do to them what you will, which I think is a, was an extreme, extremely foolish thing to say. Uh, but they said, no. They said, bring the men out, lest we do worse with you. In other words, they're threatening uh, to rape Lot as well and do the same with him. And then uh, we know that the as they pressed upon Lot to get into the house, the angels reached um, reached out of the door and pulled Lot in and closed the door. And they struck the men with blindness, those who were trying to get in the door, and they struggled to find the door. And I and I am really uh, uh, not understanding whether they were trying to find the door out or whether they were still struggling trying to find the door in, being blind, having been blinded by these angels, which would be incredible. But anyway, I, I, I think the, the, the understanding um, is that they were perhaps still trying to find their way in. So the, the angels then tell uh, Lot that they were sent to destroy the city and they needed, he needed to get out. He and his family, uh, his sons, uh, his, his uh, sons-in-laws and his daughters uh, and his wife. And, and this begs a question. Um, he said his daughters, he had two daughters that had never known men. There's no suggestion that he had more than two daughters. Uh, and I happened, I mean, I, I believe that the sons uh, or the sons-in-law must have been betrothed to his daughters. In a sense, they were contractually married, but they had not consummated the marriages. Um, so they were engaged, if you will. But the, if you know anything about ancient uh, uh, antiquity, ancient, ancient uh, Hebrews in, in particular, the betrothal was a serious uh, commitment uh, and, and, and required a divorce, uh, just like uh, a marriage would have. So, uh, and then, of course, um, Lot goes to his son-in-laws and tells them, hey, the city's going to be destroyed. Uh, we have to get out of here. And the son-in-laws uh, thought he was making a joke. I mean, they just looked at him like he was crazy and decided to stay. And so our verse picks up, our lesson text picks up at verse uh, 15. And it says, and when the morning arose, this was really the crack of dawn, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city, in the wickedness of the city. Lest you be consumed in what's going to happen because of the wickedness of the city, in other words. And again, you see here 
Uh, they are referred to as angels, and they're also referred to as men intermittently or interchangeably because, again, they appear as men. When they are referred to as angels, they are giving the message from God. They are messengers. The word is really translated messenger uh, in Genesis uh, 32 and 3, and it can be, uh, and actually here as well, they are actually uh, performing as messengers. Now, um, verse 16 says, And while he lingered, uh, this is Lot, the men laid hold upon him, uh, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, and uh, daughters, rather, the, 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 the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Now, uh, Lot is having some uh, some uh, resonance. He's really uh, kind of resisting leaving, and we don't know why. Uh, the speculation that he doesn't want to leave his uh, his wealth, whatever that might have been there, he might have converted his flocks to cash uh, and had some um, some wealth stored there. Uh, we don't know, uh, but there's some resistance to leave. Certainly, uh, to leave immediately, and so the angels, and you can imagine the two men, two angels each taking the hand of two of those in Lot's household, one taking the hand of Lot and his wife, and the other taking the hands of the two daughters and actually literally pulling them out of the city. That's what's, uh, that's what's happening here, and set them without the city. Now, part of that verse it says, the Lord being merciful unto him, okay, unto Lot, and of course, Obviously, he was merciful to his household as well, his wife and his daughters as well. And this word translated merciful uh, is elsewhere translated pity. Uh, Isaiah 63, 9, it's translated pity. So the Lord had pity on him because he was in that circumstance. Uh, and and of course, he, uh, the Lord is looking out for Abraham as well. He doesn't want Abraham to be heartbroken because his nephew got caught up in the judgment of a wicked city uh, and so he's merciful to both um, Lot his family and Abraham to all of them I should say verse 17 and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said escape for thy life look not behind thee neither stay thou in all the plain Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Now, they are speaking um, with urgency, and they're really trying to get Lot to understand, and his wife and daughters, what's going to happen. You can imagine, <coughs> excuse me, a uh, uh, an atomic bomb or nuclear uh, bomb blast uh, big enough to destroy two fairly large cities in the plains. It's going to be catastrophic, and it's going to have all kinds of uh, effects on the areas around. We'll see in a minute, even the crops were destroyed. And so he's telling them to get clear of these plains and get into the mountains. And the, this, this word mountains really mean hills, a hilly area. There's no specific mountain specified here, but get into the hilly areas out of the plains. Now, the angel also tells them not to look back. Uh, and we'll see in a minute how um, Lot's wife, uh, despite that warning, uh, did look back. And there, there are maybe two, maybe three reasons why she, uh, she did look back. Uh, uh, maybe she, uh, she missed uh, that city. Maybe she had... Uh, become accustomed to the sinful lifestyle there and, and she looked back longingly um, uh, wanting to have one last look and remember it um, uh, maybe um, maybe uh, you know the angels perceived that Lot might want to look back in some righteous indignation and 
kind of with some smug satisfaction gloating over the fact that this evil city was getting its its just due um, getting their uh, judgment uh, uh, and but the angels are concerned about you know hey this is going to take time you're going to look back you're going to waste time in looking back and and of course it's certainly not appropriate for you to do either gloat over uh, those who are being destroyed uh, because of their wickedness, or certainly to look back longingly, uh, desiring uh, maybe uh, with some desire, uh, which his wife may have may have been doing. And Lot said unto them, verse 18, Oh, not so, my Lord. Now, he refers to one of the angels. Uh, this may be the one, the chief speaker or spokesperson. And uh, the term is not, it's just suggesting uh, respect. This term Lord it does not uh, necessarily imply uh, any acknowledgement of divinity. Uh, and then verse 19 says, Behold now, thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, or enlarged or expanded your mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. Now he says, my life, uh, we, we, ha we have to assume he means his life, his wife, and his daughters. Uh, and I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil take me and I die. It sounds fairly self-centered there, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll be kind and assume when he says me or my, he's referring to his family as well. And the commentator uh really notes uh, the irony, some irony here. Uh, well, Lot uh, uh, is more fearful of disaster that would happen to him if he goes to the mountain uh, if than he is, apparently, than uh, staying in, in the plain, lingering uh, in the plains there. And, of course, he's already acknowledged God's grace and mercy in delivering him or saving him from destruction, but he can't trust that God would uh, protect him until he reaches safety. That's that's really ironic, but you know that's that's kind of where too many of us live. You know, we we know what God has done in our life, we know what God is doing, what He's able to do, and what He's promised to do, but then we we stumble when we when we don't trust him uh, for small things, when he's delivered, he's brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He's delivered us from so many things and danger, seen and unseen. But then when it comes to some small things, we worry and we fret as if he's never done anything. You know, Romans 8 tells us that he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? And it's not everything that we desire, but it's everything that we stand in need of. If God did not spare his own son, what won't he give us that we need? You know, uh, if he gave if he saved our eternal lives, what won't he give us beside that? Verse 20. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto. And it is a little one, this is Lot speaking, Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. Again, he's talking about my, and uh, it seems very self-centered, but uh, we, we have to assume he's meaning him and his wife and daughters. Uh, and he is assuming that uh, this is a little city, and maybe there's not as much corruption there, or maybe God uh, is not as, as sin-filled as the larger cities. Uh, maybe God can overlook uh, maybe the little sinful uh, place. Uh, and so he's suggesting that uh, he be allowed to go to the city rather than in the hill country. And I don't know whether he's carrying uh, some wealth with him you know maybe gold silver whatever and he's uh, afraid that he might be attacked by bandits or what but he is not wanting to go into the hill country so he's suggesting this little at this point unnamed city it's a small city 
relatively speaking, but it's in proximity. It's pretty close because they get there within a very short time. Uh, we'll see that in a minute. Verse 21 says, And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which or of the which thou hast spoken. Now this city we see in verse 23 is Zor. Uh, it becomes named, uh, is later named, I should say, Zor, which means small. It just means small. And uh, uh, he, uh, so the angel is, is basically accepting his request. <coughs> and we can't help but think that that is certainly with the Lord's will. And that's, that's in accordance with the Lord's will. We don't think that the angel is making a unilateral decision to allow um, Zor to um, uh, to not be judged if, 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 it's God in, if it's God's intention that it be judged. Verse 22, he said, Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou come thither or until you get to this small city. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. And again, Zor simply means... Um, little or small um, and verse 23 says the sun has risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor now they left hastily at the angels urgings in fact at the angels tugging uh, at dawn as it was dawning now later in the morning when the sun is is high uh, we don't know what mid-morning perhaps they enter into Zors. It's it's a few hours away, maybe early mid morning. It's a few hours away, and they get there on foot, and they get there, and once they're there, then God's judgment begins. So verse uh, 24 says, "Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven." Now, you you you, you hear brimstone mentioned several places in the bible in connection with god's judgment his wrath job 18 15 we don't have time to go to these psalm 11 6 isaiah 30 uh, 33 isaiah 34 9 ezekiel 38 22 and i you know i remember hearing about brimstone uh, from my childhood and really never thought about what it was except they used some burning stones and in fact that's that's what it means uh and it's actually sulfur uh if you look up brimstone you'll see sulfur sulfur is a metallic uh, uh i guess you could refer to it as a stone and of course it burns uh intensely and so it rained sulfur burning sulfur from heaven, this isn't something that was natural. It was ab absolutely supernatural, and a judgment of God. and And you have to wonder uh, why. I mean, God has tolerated such sin in so many areas of the earth since then. You know, we know just before the flood, um, we uh, which we began reading about in. Uh, nor I mean Genesis six to eight, and and uh, we know that the earth, uh, people on the earth, had become so corrupt, and God saw evil and violence continually or continuing, and it became uh, so uh, uh, such a stench in his nostrils, and and so deplorable that he 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 decided he was going to destroy all man except for. Of course, he showed mercy on eight souls, and that was Noah and his family. Uh, this is something similar here. Uh, this this uh, sin has gotten so flagrant and has become so offensive to God. He just simply can't tolerate it anymore. And God has judged nations throughout history when the sin has gotten to a point where we, he can only see it continuing perpetually, when there's evil from the very top of government to the very lowest, the very basis of men, he destroys these kingdoms. And you can you can go back and study your history, and you'll see one one kingdom or nation after another has had a rise, and ultimately they've become 
uh, uh, self-indulgent and wicked and, and corrupt and ultimately destroyed. They're, they're judged by God. And, and a lot of times it, it, it begins with internal, with internal deterioration. Uh, then verse, uh, verse 25 says, And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities uh, and that which grew upon the ground. Now remember uh, what attracted Lot to that area, that general area, were the well-watered plains. And so God is destroying all the crops and, and the grassy areas in that in that vicinity, in the plains, and all the inhabitants. It doesn't say any escape other than Lot and his uh, daughters and wife at this point, to this point. Uh, now, they had gotten into Zor. I, I've, you know, you've, we've all seen uh, movies, and we've seen how uh, uh, Lot and his family are leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, and they're still in eyesight of the city. And his wife looks back, and she turns into a pillar of salt. And verse 26 says, But his wife looked back from behind him and became a pillar of salt. Um, but she is in Zor. I mean, if, if the chronology is correct here, they've made it to Zor, and she's looking back. And at this point, the destruction is just beginning. All she can see, perhaps, is smoke coming up uh, on the horizon of the plain. But she's looking back uh, again, which the angel forbade her to do, told her not to do. And again, perhaps she's looking back with some longing or some desire uh, to be uh, to be back there, or to uh, she's missing that uh, sinful lifestyle. We don't know. We're not told, but. We do know she became a pillar of salt in the Dead Sea. Uh, at the, uh, the the edge of the Dead Sea, there there was uh, there were a lot of uh, salt formations. Uh, you know, the Jordan enters into the Dead Sea, but there is no outlet from the Dead Sea. So the only way water leaves is by evaporation. And when water evaporates, of course, it leaves the minerals. It leaves the salts and the minerals uh, in the sea, and the Dead Sea has nine times the salt that uh, normal oceans have. It's very salty. <laughs> so this same salt that perhaps was in the in the Dead Sea uh, consumed her and was absorbed by her, and she became a salt pillar or statue, and was therefore. For, for, for centuries, perhaps, in, in fact, Josephus uh, wrote about having seen this pillar of salt that, was, uh, that had been Lot's wife. And that was, he, he was uh, in the first century. He was first century uh, uh, historian, a uh, Jewish historian. And then uh, between verses 27 and 29, which is where our lesson uh, text picks up, uh, we see that uh, uh, God actually, uh, that Abraham rally, I'm sorry, gets up early and, and he looks toward the plain, toward Sodom, and he sees the smoke coming up and uh, uh, it looks like a furnace. And then verse 29, uh, A says, and it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham. Now, now we see this term, God remembered his people. He remembered this person or remembered that person. He remembered this person, that, this woman that was barren, or he remembered his people in, in Egypt in bondage. And it's not that God ever forgot. I mean, God doesn't forget anything. But it means uh, that God is is. Uh, committed, he's turning his attention to this person, committing to act on this person's or this group's behalf in fulfilling uh, uh, a promise or fulfilling his word. And, uh, you know, he he remembered Noah, you know, he protected him and his family. Of course, he remembered his children that were in bondage in Egypt, and he sent a deliverer, he sent uh, Moses to deliver them and so forth. Uh, so God remembered Abraham. And again, 
he was merciful on Abraham. He didn't want Abraham to be heartbroken over the loss of his nephew uh, with in the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah. And verse 29 says, And he sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities which in which Lot dwelt. So he delivered Lot safely. And if you read on, uh, if you read on, you'll know that he delivered his daughters and they didn't spend a, a, a lot of time in Zor. They ended up going to the, the mountains anyway. And unfortunately, uh, there his daughter sinned great, greatly in getting their fathers drunk because they now they are concerned about uh, his uh, descendants, about his father having descendants because what his wife is dead, their mother's dead. They have no husbands, and so they get a lot drunk, and they, they sleep uh, consecutive nights with him, and they each get impregnated by him. And those uh, children, incestuous children, uh, or children of incest, become nations, Moab uh, being one of them. And we, we had a lesson a couple of weeks ago about Ruth, who was a Moabite. Uh, she was uh, descended from the, the child born of the first daughter, that slept with uh, with Lot. Uh, so, in in, in summary, uh, the takeaway I think the main takeaway from our lesson today is to see that God is is only going to tolerate evil uh, to a point. Uh, he is not going to tolerate wickedness uh, indefinitely. There's going to be a judgment on wickedness, and and we don't know when that is. But when God reaches his uh, 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 his his break point, if you will, uh, he is going to judge and he is going to judge severely as he did uh, these cities on the plains. But again, we see God being merciful in delivering Lot, in fact, being willing to spare the whole city if 10 had been found righteous. And, and so I don't know, we, we, we have to assume that that all the others uh, were 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 wicked. I mean, you, you have to think about children, but you know, um, God is is certainly uh, uh, just and and righteous and holy, and certainly takes into consideration uh, children who uh, might be influenced by that wicked lifestyle as they grow into adulthood. And he may have been merciful, more merciful to them in taking them before they entered into a sinful adult uh, or even adolescent lifestyle uh, and, and saved them and, and actually uh, took them to heaven uh, instead of uh, allowing them to become habitual sinners and, and, of course, ultimately end up in hell, eternally separated from him. So... Uh, we see both God's wisdom, I mean, judgment and his mercy. And if you if you uh, if you pay enough attention, you'll see that throughout the Bible. God both exercises judgment and mercy. And, and he is the just and the justifier. Uh, Romans three twenty six tells us uh, he is perfectly just and perfectly holy. And, and he justifies uh, the the sins, you know, I, I, I often uh, speak to um, prisoners uh, at the, uh, the county jail, and I, and I make salvation as simple as I can at some points. And I say, you know, God is perfectly holy, and because of his perfect holiness, all sin is going to be paid for. All sin is going to be paid for. Uh, because if, if it were not, then God could not be perfectly just. He could not be perfectly holy. But it comes down to this. You're either going to pay for your own sin, and that payment means eternal separation from God, and even his common grace, the common grace that you endure or enjoy in this life, where he maketh his sun to shine and his rain to fall on the just and the unjust in this life. But if you're eternally separated from him, you'll be eternally separated from even that love and common grace. You're either going to pay for your own sin or you're going to accept the payment already made by the Lord Jesus Christ. So God is is merciful in providing a lamb for himself, 
a sacrificial lamb that bore our sins on the cross and has paid our sin debt. Not that he's going to. He has paid our sin debt. And all we have to do is accept that payment or we will pay our own sin debt. May God uh, keep you in, uh, in his loving care is our, is our prayer.